This is Algebra 2, Chapter 6, Section 5, in which we will be studying operations with radical expressions. We've already, earlier in the year, talked about breaking down square roots, and we looked for perfect square factors to break them down by. We're going to do more of that, but we're also going to deal with cube roots and fourth roots and so forth. And we're going to try to break things down into those factors instead if, they're, if those are the problems we're dealing with. So we need to know a list of squares and cubes and so forth to be able to work with these. So I have here for you on your trusty note sheet a group of square factors, a group of cube factors, a group of fourth power factors, and fifth power factors. Okay. You'll notice I didn't go very far on these because, quite frankly, you're just not going to have to deal with those numbers. Um, how do you know which column to use? Depends on what kind of root you're dealing with. If you're dealing with a cube root, you do the cube root column. If you're doing a square root, you go to the square root column. Now, what this thing tells you is the roots of various numbers. The cube root of 64 is 4. The fourth root of 1296 is 6. So if you're dealing with trying to break down a cube root, you're going to try to see if any of these numbers in the cube column goes into the number you're working with. And I'll show you how to do that here. So we're going to do some simplifying. We're looking at the square root of 288, C11, D7. Well, I start going down my squares list, and I find out with doing a little division that 288 is 144 times 2. And I picked 144 because I know the square root of it. C eleventh I rewrote as C tenth times C because I know the square root of C tenth. C D seven I wrote as D six times D because I know the square root of D six. Now I'm going to take these square roots that I know. I know the square root of one forty four on my sheet tells me it's twelve. C tenth the square root of that is C fifth. D6, the square root of that is D third. And now what am I left with? A 2, a C, and a D that I don't know the square roots of. So they stayed on the inside. Okay. Let's do one with a cube in it. Cube root of 108, Y 12th, Z 7th. I need to break this down. So I'm going to try out of my cubes list and see if 8 goes into 108 and it doesn't. Does 27 go into 108? My calculator says yes it does, 27 times 4. Y 12th, and then I'm going to rewrite this because I know the cube root of Z 6. So Z 7 will be Z 6 times Z. Take the cube roots that we know. Cube root of 27 is 3. Cube root of Y 12 is Y 4. Cube root of z6 is z squared. And then what are we left with? The cube root of 4z. Now a lot of people will make a mistake here and see that 4 and say, oh, I know the square root of 4, it's 2. Well, that's true, but we're dealing with a cube root. So don't cross columns on yourself and make things wrong. Stick to the column that you're working with. We don't know the cube root of 4. So we're stuck with it. Now there's a rule in math that says you can't leave radicals in the denominator. So you have to do what's called rationalizing the denominator. You need to make your denominator into a perfect square or perfect cube or perfect fourth or whatever you're working with to be able to clean it up. And what we're going to do is multiply by some appropriate factor that we have to figure out for each problem. Okay, for example, we have the square root of a to the ninth over the square root of b to the fifth. I can't take the square root of b to the fifth because 5 isn't even. But if I multiplied by one more b on there, 
then I would have b to the sixth. So I need to multiply by a factor of square root b. Whatever you do to the bottom, you also have to do to the top. This is our appropriate factor to multiply by. Now on bottom, that gives me b sixth. On top, I'm going to break my a ninth down into a eight times a. And then the b is in there. Take square roots of what we know. And we're left with a to the fourth squared of ab over b cubed. Notice now there's no more radical in the denominator. Okay. Same idea works if we have higher powers. We're on a fifth root of 4x cubed over a fifth root of 27y squared. Well, 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. So I have three threes there. I need five, so that means I'm too short. So I need to give myself two more threes. Three times three is nine. I have y squared. I need five y's, so that means I'm three short. So I need a fifth root of nine y cubed, and whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. Now, up top, the arithmetic's easy. It's the fifth root of 4 times 9 is 36, x cubed, y cubed. Down here, we, we rigged the deck. We had three threes and two threes. That makes five threes. The fifth root of that is a three. And we have five y's now. The fifth root of that is a y. Now, people also make this mistake. They try to cancel the three into the 36 and get a 12. The 3 and the y are outside the radical. These things are inside. You can't bring inside terms and outside terms together very well. So that's as far as that one can go. Another kind of problem is where we're multiplying roots together. As long as they're the same root, which the ones you get will be, what we have to do is multiply the outside things, 5 times 3 is 15, and multiply the inside things, negative 12 times 18 is negative 216, a fifth and b sixth from combining the variables. The cubed root of 216 on my sheet from before is 6, and the cubed root of a negative is still negative, so we have 15 times negative 6, 3 goes into 5 one time and leaves 2 a's left on the inside. And the cube root of b6 is b squared. Now all that's left is clean up out here. 15 times negative 6 is negative 90. a b squared on the cube root of a squared. Okay. Let's do another one of this type. 2 times this fourth root times 3 times that fourth root. 2 times 3 is 6. Multiplying the stuff inside the radicals, we get 16x9, y4. I'm going to break that x9 down into x4, x4, and x, so I can take some fourth roots. The fourth root of 16 on my sheet is 2. I've got an x here and an x here and a y here from the fourth roots. And then just a little cleanup work, 12x squared y times the fourth root of x. Okay. When we have addition and subtraction going on, we can combine these things together as long as the radicals are alike. They both have to be the same kind of root, square root, third root, whatever. And they also have to have the same thing inside the radical. And that is, that's what this is. The radicand is the stuff inside the radical. Sometimes they don't look like like terms, such as these two. But once you do some simplifying, they are. So let's simplify these square roots and see if we can make them match up so we can combine. This 8 is 4 times 2. 50, using my squares column, is 25 times 2. 
We know the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of five, 25 is 5. 8 squared of 2 plus 15 squared of 2 added together is 23 squared of 2. Okay, don't try to add the 2's and get 23 squared of 4. That's not correct. 8 of something plus 15 of something is 23 of that something. Okay, let's tend with another one. 5 root 12 plus 2 root 27 plus the square root of 128. I'm going to break them down. 12 is 4 times 3, 27 is 9 times 3, and 128 is 64 times 2. Take the square roots that we know, and then clean up the arithmetic, and we have 10 root 3 plus 6 root 3 minus 8 root 2. The 2 squared to 3 terms are alike, so I can combine those together and get 16 squared to 3. The square root of 2 isn't a like term, so it just has to stay out there. Think of it kind of like x's and y's. They can't combine together, so they're just separate. Okay. If we have addition and subtraction inside a multiplication, the old distributive idea still works, so we're going to distribute. 6 times 7 is 42. Square root of 3 times square root of 2 is square root of 6. Outside term, 6 times 3 is 18. Square root of 9. Inside terms, the negative 3 times 7 is the negative 21. Square root of 4. And then negative 9. Square root of 6. Do a little arithmetic here. 42 squared of 6 minus 9 squared of 6 match. So they collect together to make 31 squared of 6. We know the square root of 9 is 3 times 18 is 54. Square root of 4 is 2 times 21 is 42. 54 minus 42 leaves 12 plus 31 square root of 6 we can't combine the 12 and the 31 because this is not a square root of 6 thing. So be careful there. Don't try to overdo things. The last thing we have is rationalizing denominators that have addition or subtraction in them. When you do this, you have to do like we did with the i's. You have to use the conjugate. The conjugate of the denominator square root of 2 minus 3 would be square root of 2 plus 3. And then whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. Now it's distributing time. 4 square root of 2 plus 12 plus square root of 4 plus 3 square root of 2. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2 plus 3 root 2, minus 3 root 2, minus 9. Okay, cleaning up here, we know the square root of 4 is 2, plus the 12 is 14. 4 square root of 2 plus 3 square root of 2 makes 7 square root of 2. On bottom, these square root of 2's cancel. We have 2 minus 9 is negative 7. Now, technically, we need to reduce this because negative 7 divides into everybody. But for our purposes, if you can get to here, I will be as happy as I can be with it. I won't be upset that you don't reduce that. Just get it to this point, and I'm good. So a lot to get through there, but I think you can handle all of it. If we had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in. We'll see you in class.